I was scared to touch it. It'd be loud and it'd preach out. Good evening. How's everyone doing tonight? How many of you ladies came out to the conference this morning? And look at that, you came back tonight. Fantastic. You know, you've heard the uh, the age old adage, you know, that it was quiet, so quiet you could hear a pin drop. Not the case today. Not the case today. 250 ladies in the same room. I don't know whose idea that was to put them all in the same room, but they did. But uh, what a conference today, ladies. That was fantastic, wasn't it? A good speaker and good singing. Uh, but we're glad the rest of us are here tonight and you come back. Let's stand as we worship the Lord and give him some praise and glory with the church family tonight.
amazing grace. God is so good. And that's what this next song says. Beautiful chorus that just says, I love you, Lord. You are so good. I love you, Lord.
Southwest Florida. Beautiful night. Uh, it's hard for me sometimes to remember that this is January. It's almost like summer out there. It's so warm and, and uh, beautiful and a great day. And I want to thank you for coming out on Saturday night uh, on this warm day because it'd be easy to be on the boat. It'd be easy to be out on the beach looking at the, looking at the sunset. It'd be easy to do a lot of other things. And you're not. You're in the Lord's house with God's people. And so I want to thank you for doing that. Uh, and I know God appreciates it. He does. And uh, that's faithfulness. That's keeping your mind on the right priorities, doing the right thing. I believe when we honor God in that way, that God honors us. I really believe that. And we need to do a lot of other things for him. But I believe when we say, Lord, I'm going to do this or be this because, what, because you want it. And he knows it's not easy. He knows it's hard. Uh, he, he honors us. He blesses us for doing that. Turn to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, as Paul's talking about the gospel, the gospel is not from man. The gospel is not from man. Galatians chapter 1, uh, starting with uh, verse 11. I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preach is not something that, ma that man made. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. Uh, for you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, and how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many Jews of my own age and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. That when God, who set me apart from birth and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal to his son to me that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not consult any man, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was. But I went immediately into Arabia and later returned to Damascus. Lord, uh, thank you for the reading of your word and thank you for the blessings that come from your word. And I pray, Lord, we realize the power of what you say to us. 
the power of all of your of your word, the Old Testament, New Testament, how you speak to us through it, if we if we will read it and we will bring it into our hearts and minds. We don't read it enough, we don't meditate on it enough, Lord. So we need your help. Challenge us with this word and help us to go out and use it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we know that the Galatians had accepted uh, the gospel and that Paul preached to them, but later uh, Judaizers had spread a uh, false gospel among them. So uh, these new believers were going to have to choose uh, to believe Paul or to believe uh, these Jewish uh, false teachers. In our text today, Paul is making his case for why uh, we should believe that uh, the Paul had the true gospel. He's going to make the case for that. And it's important because Paul, again, is going to be not only to these people, but to the rest of us to remind us one more time where his messages came from. Paul wrote most of the New Testament. And so as we're going to be reading him, we're going to be asking the question, why listen to Paul? Who is Paul? Uh, why did Paul have the authority to do this and, and to share this? Now, I have complete confidence in Paul's writing, complete confidence in God's word, but it's important for us to revisit this from time to time. So Paul tells us the gospel he preached was not man-made. It was not man-made. What Paul was telling the Galatians and what he had written in his letters was not made by man. Turn to 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. Now, many of you know this text, and that's great. Those of you who don't, please mark it and go back to it. It is very foundational teaching in the New Testament and the, in the Bible. All scripture is God-breed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. All scripture is God-breed. Uh, we all are, are accustomed to reading stuff. Uh, we, Since we learn in school to read, we, we read a lot of different things. Uh, many of you may be people who like to read books and uh, maybe you buy books from time to time, you buy novels, uh, you buy self-help books. Uh, there's so much stuff out there. I love to go to second-hand shops that sell all kinds of things, and then they have books. And I look at all the books that are there, and some of them were kind of expensive uh, when the person bought them. But now they're in the book racks, the second-hand book racks. Uh, and, and a lot of those books, there, there are probably some good things there that we need to, to hear. Uh, there's some wisdom shared from some people. There, and from time to time, you get a good religious book that really backs up what God's Word has said and amplifies it and applies it. And that's good stuff. But understand this. Most of what we find out there is written by men. It's inspired by men. It comes from the thoughts and the hearts of men. And uh, Paul, is saying, uh, Paul is saying to 2 Timothy, gospel, the gospel, the Bible, is God-breathed and God-inspired. It's God-empowered. It's like nothing else we know. Uh, when we read God's word and we share God's word with other people, there's so much power to change the hearts of others. Uh, uh, Romans uh, 10 tells us that, that people cannot be, uh, have faith in God, people cannot have faith in Christ without first hearing the word. Now, I don't know if you realize the power of that, but what that's saying is that people can't get saved unless they hear God's word. And if they, they can't hear God's word unless we share it with them. That's what it's telling us there in Romans chapter 10. But it's talking again about the power of God's word, how it is inspired, how it is God-powered. Power, power. The Bible alone can be trusted uh, to guide us to Christ and to the abundant life. And Paul is going to reinforce that again and again because he wants them to believe in the God-inspired words, the gospel he's sharing, but also the message he's sharing with the people. This is where they're going to find life. This is where they're going to find salvation in God's word and not in something else. Secondly, Paul tells us he did not receive it from a man, nor was he taught it uh, by a man. Turn to 2 Peter, 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. This is again one of those foundational texts that we need to know. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were being carried along by the Holy Spirit. Let me read that to you one more time. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy 
Nothing that has come from the Bible uh, can, came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will, in the pen of man. But man spoke from God as they were being carried along by the Holy Spirit. I love that, the way that's put, because it tells us that all everything we read in the Bible has been inspired by God and that men wrote it and their personality sometimes comes out in those letters, but it all came inspired from God. That, that we can trust what God has said. Why? Because it's God inspired. God gave it. The Holy Spirit carried these men along. It is God breathed. That is God spoken. Often you will hear people that will say, oh, listen, the Bible is written by man. It's like any other story, any other fable, any other book that you might read. They're absolutely wrong. And the scripture says it again and again. Paul says it. Peter says it. That this is a special book. Why? Because these are the very words of God. And I've often made the argument that these are the very words of God. And these words are a part of God. And they always will be. You can destroy all the Bibles in the world. And God's word will still be there. Because it's a part of him. It will be there when we get to heaven. God's word will be there. It is timeless. It is endless. It is everlasting. Man did not give Paul his message of the gospel. It uh, did not come uh, by man. He was not taught by man, but it came by the Holy Spirit. And so I know that when I study God's word, and I'm a Christian, that God is speaking to me through that word, and I know there's great power in what God has said. And believers need to believe in that power and tap into that because we're reading God's word, we're studying it, we're meditating on it, and we're sharing with others. We need to believe in that power. These words are like, again, like no other. And we ought to put ourselves into it, put our life into it, to knowing it, to reading it, uh, to memorizing. Why? Because it was given not by man, but by the Holy Spirit. In verse 12 it says, he, Paul received it by revelation uh, from Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul was instructed uh, directly, the direct revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus taught him. I believe it was by a vision. I believe that God uh, met with Paul and taught him uh, what he was going to write, what he was going to say. Uh, he was had a disadvantage because he was not one of the original apostles. He didn't get to see all the miracles and all the things that Jesus did and said. He didn't get to see uh, Jesus die, but he met uh, uh, personally with Jesus, and Jesus taught him. That's why Paul knew so many things that he could share with us that the uh, other apostles would not write down. They would come from the apostle Paul. Uh, what, a, what a great story. Think about Paul and who he was and how God chose him and God spoke to him. Uh, next, Paul reminds them of his credentials in Judaism. Uh, Paul was extremely zealous for the traditions of his fathers. Uh, Paul was a spark plug. Paul was a maniac. That's what I think of the apostle Paul. Uh, he was zealous, so zealous, he wanted to go out and get anybody who was an enemy of uh, Judaism. Uh, z that zeal uh, was good for Paul when he became a Christian, but in the beginning, uh, he was zealous at destroying the church. Paul was uh, well-educated and excelled in the areas of Judaism. I can't emphasize that enough. Paul was a rising star in Judaism. Paul was one of those guys like we talk about in politics. Oh, that guy's going to run for president someday. Oh, God will help you if you run for president today. <laughs> good. Not a good thing. It used to be, but not anymore. But uh, he was a rising star. I believe at his age that a lot of the uh, older men were looking at him and saying, this guy's going to uh, be a great leader. This guy's going to be something special. And because of the things that he was doing, but also because of his education, he was very well educated. Uh, he was educated by Gamaliel, and he was the most honored rabbi of the first century. He was well known and respected as an expert on religious law. I don't know what we would compare it to today. I, I don't even think if you said this guy, you know, Paul had went to a place like Harvard or Yale or, or uh, MIT or something like that. I don't know what we could compare it to. But when people heard about Paul's education, that made him above everybody else in his education. That made him an expert. It made him, a, made him something special. Uh, he went through the best of graduate uh, training. And so Paul would be uniquely equipped to do his job. 
Paul was showing his critics that he was more qualified as a Jew and a teacher than they were. If I don't believe Paul was bragging about his education. I don't believe that at all. I don't think Paul was saying, hey, look at me. Look at what I did. Look at where I came from. I think Paul was showing his critics that he was more qualified as a Jew than they were before he came to Christ. That he was uh, able to teach and was well-educated more than they were. And so uh, that was something that he was able to throw at them and say, you need to be listening to me and not listening to them. Uh, again, Paul's zeal was so extreme that he persecuted the church that he would one day represent. Uh, Paul would be called, of course, to preach uh, to the Gentiles. And this is important because when we talked about qualifications. I believe God picked Paul to do the job he was doing because of all the things that Paul could give uh, to his ministry. All of the unique way, again, that he was equipped. Uh, thinking about Paul uh, with his education, Paul was going to have to go uh, in front of uh, political leaders and religious leaders. He was going to have to deal with people who were in the legal system. He was going to be talking to governors. And so Paul was no bumpkin. Paul was well-educated. At times, he would meet with Gentiles who, had, who were philosophers, and Paul was able to speak on their level. God chose him. Why? Because he could do these things. Uh, he was a Roman citizen, so he's going to be able to travel uh, around the Roman Empire because he was a Roman citizen. He had special rights as a Roman citizen. There are certain things you couldn't do to a Roman citizen because he was a citizen, like beat him without a trial, which Paul had been beaten without a trial. Uh, he'd be able to travel in, in all of the Roman provinces because he was a Roman. But I believe that God was fitting him again uh, to preach to the Gentiles, but also to debate uh, God's word and the prophecy about the Messiah with the Jews. See, Paul would sit down with these Jewish men and be able to reason with them from the prophetic scriptures about the Messiah. And that, that would be invaluable. Why? Because other men would have been afraid to do that. The, uh, the apostles, the disciples, uh, most of them did not have any kind of an education compared to Paul, but Paul did it. So when Paul sat down with Jewish leaders. When Paul sat down with Jewish men, he was able to talk about Judaism as no one else could. He had been a very self-righteous Pharisee. He knew all about Judaism, all about the law, and all about the prophetic uh, scriptures, and so he was able to reason with them. He was the perfect guy to go out and spread the gospel to the Gentiles, but also uh, to the Jews. And I also believe, as I mentioned, that it, his zeal was very important. He was excited about uh, defending Judaism. And when he came to Christ, he was excited about following Christ. I, I thought about the things that happened to Paul uh, as he went, went about being a missionary. How many times he was beaten. How he was stoned. How he was shipwrecked. All the things that he went through. The normal guy would have quit a long time ago. But Paul didn't. Paul didn't. Paul kept serving, Paul kept going out and starting churches, and Paul kept battling with false teaching and false teachers all the time he was doing all these other things. Oh, praise the Lord uh, for the Apostle Paul. We're going to talk more about him next week, but I want to talk with you just for a second about the Lord Jesus. Paul accepted Christ when he, when he had that vision of Christ, when he was, uh, had that miraculous conversion on the road to Damascus, his whole life changed. Uh, when he was talking to the Lord, he asked who the Lord was, and, and Jesus said, it's me, it's the one you're persecuting. And I believe that broke Paul's heart. I believe that was something that he held near, near to him his whole life, that he had been persecuting the church and persecuting Christ. He thought he was on God's side. I just wondered tonight, are you on God's side? Have you given your heart to Jesus Christ? Are you living for him? The Bible says if we're not living for Jesus, then we're living for the world. And our life is wound up in the world. I'm not saying that you're a bad person. I'm not saying you're an evil person because you've not accepted Christ. What I'm saying is that you're not living for Jesus and you've not asked him to save you from your sins. And there's nothing we would like better than for you to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
That would be the best thing that could ever happen if you would say, you know what, I want Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And we're here tonight to worship the Lord. We're here tonight to talk about Him, to gather around His table, to give gifts to Him. But we're around here tonight to worship our great King, Jesus. And if you don't know Him, we would love to spend some time sharing with you who Jesus is. Why would you wait uh, another day? Let us talk with you about Jesus. Let's stand together and let's pray. Oh, Father, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for uh, the Apostle Paul. I thank you for uh, his ministry to the Galatians and his ministry to so many other churches, Lord, and provinces that needed him and needed your word. I thank you for how strong a defender he was of the gospel, how he defended your word, how he shared your word freely with many people, many people who were angry, who were hostile towards him. He still shared the truth with them. Help us to have that same boldness and not to be afraid. At the same time, Lord, we're praying tonight for those who might not know you. Uh, people that have heard about God, heard about Jesus, but have never accepted him as Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray that we would uh, humble ourselves before you and ask you to save us. Ask you to wash our sins away and come to you and confess you as Lord. Repent of our sins and, Lord, ask you to help us to be baptized in Christ to wash our sins away. I pray, Lord, that you'd bless us in that. And I pray, Lord, that you'd encourage anybody here to continue to walk with you and to come let a worship with us. And Lord, I ask you to bless this table that we're sharing in tonight that reminds us of the, the life that Jesus gave. I'm excited about uh, him, Jesus revealing himself to Paul because Paul had so much to learn about who Jesus was, how he lived, and how he died, and why he died. When he found those things out, he came to you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you help us to treasure what Christ has done for us. The body that was broken, the blood that was shed for each one of us. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
thank you for the life of Jesus, one solitary life that changed all of mankind, changed all time. We thank you for you to send him at just the right time. We thank you, Lord, that people introduced us to Christ. Where will we be today unless we met someone who knew Jesus? So I pray, Lord, as we give today, we remember we're supporting that other people might hear about Christ, that that gift might be given to them. Help us to give cheerfully, to give from our hearts, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Uh, please take note of the uh, announcements in our bulletin, and uh, we're very grateful for the uh, women's conference, Steve. A uh, great crowd, Steve. Was, you were here most of the day, weren't you? Most of the day, yeah. So I. Uh, what uh, was your I, function? My function was to uh, basically be the sheriff. Uh, so I, yeah. I was in the auditorium with all 250 ladies today. Okay. Did you get a word in? Not one. Okay. You know, I tried, you know, I even screamed and shouted. Yeah, no, nobody listened. There's nothing. So uh, it was a fantastic day. I simply just ran the sound, so I, I just got to relax and have a good time with that. Uh, but I, I will tell you, I believe it or not, I've been to all the women's conferences here at Capri, and uh, this was a really good one. Uh, all of them have been good, but this one really stood out to me. Yeah. So yeah, congratulations yeah. to our women's ministry. A great challenge. Uh, uh, for us in that so okay tell us about the concert series concert series starts tomorrow night as a matter of fact uh, so come back with us at six o'clock tomorrow we're welcoming back to our stage brian and yvonne hudson you can see him on the screen there i've uh, been mentioning that brian used to sing with the old kingsman quartet uh brian has sang in quartets for quite some time so he's very uh very professional with that uh, one of the best singers in christian entertainment today uh, and his lovely wife, they travel together. They have a ministry they call Rescue Me Ministries that really uh, help to encourage good, strong Christian marriages. Uh, but tomorrow night, they're going to be doing a musical program. Uh, and so come out 6 o'clock tomorrow night. That is a free concert. Uh, with all of our concerts, they are free, but we do uh, invite you to participate in a love offering at the end uh, just to help go support their ministries as they continue to go out and sing for the Lord. But tomorrow night at 6 o'clock p.m. Yes. And then also in the bulletin coming up in February, uh, we have the sold out quartet coming back. And a lot of you have been asking about that. And we got so excited uh, to announce that for that bulletin that we put it on the wrong day. <laughs> and so uh, it is actually on Saturday, Saturday, February 1st. And I think the bulletin says that we have them on Sunday evening, the 2nd. Uh, so make that change for us and uh, let other people know that that will be Saturday, uh, February the 1st, and that will be at 6 o'clock, and that will be right after the service. And so I've been telling people that if you want a good seat for that concert, come to the church service at 5, and you've already got your seat. There you go. Good. I've got a cop drop in. It's not working. Yeah. But what I need is an inhaler. Okay. Uh, please don't forget our, our Bible studies that are in our bulletin, our small groups, also the women's Bible study, uh, the Phillips Ministry Luncheon coming up this week, and the garage sale. If you want to be part of the garage sale, we want you to help out with it, but also we want you to donate items, and you can do that on Wednesday, following Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday uh, between 9 and 2.30. Uh, also, don't forget, uh, we're also selling tickets for the Love Changes Everything Banquet that's coming up February the 7th. And those tickets are $15, and you can buy those in the fellowship hall. I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, we'll have, you'll have the best food. We have an endless salad bar there, uh, uh, meat entrees to go with it, and great music. And we want you to be part of that. So you can start buying those today. Uh, ballpark weekend, and we gave you a heads up on that. That's the 15th and 16th of February. And that's where you wear your, your baseball uniform stuff, and we give you a hot dog. Uh, also, next Sunday is... I uh, will. Congregational meeting is next Sunday, and that is for anybody that is a member or associate member. Uh, we uh, uh, vote on our elders, also uh, just kind of present the budget uh, for 2020 that our board has approved, and we just need congregational approval on that. So if you are an associate member or a member of the church, uh, please come back and be with us next Sunday after the 1115 service. Uh, that will help us out as we uh, uh, really ask God's blessing on a new year for us here at Capri. Would you say something about small groups? I, so I sure will. Yeah, our small groups have gotten off to a great start. We're in uh, week number three, believe it or not, coming up this week. And uh, all those groups are uh, really just well attended. It's a great, great time for you to come and really meet some folks. And so we've got small groups in just about every area uh, where our folks attend. Uh, so uh, find that bulletin insert. We've got some in the office and then also the lessons are in there. 
Uh, but the lessons are, are from the book of Ephesians. Um, and the questions are, are challenging, but they're, they're a good challenge. Uh, in our small groups, we intentionally do not do anything to embarrass you. Sometimes people don't attend because they thought, oh, I don't know the answer. Somebody's going to call on me. They're going to make me read. Uh, to be honest with you, come and just meet some folks and, and enjoy us a cup of coffee. Some of those groups do a dinner. And I, I joke around that if you play your cards right, you're going to have a Bible study every night of the week and dinner already in one of those small groups. Uh, but we really emphasize meeting people at those, those small groups. Uh, so come on out and enjoy that with us. And uh, this, this insert of the small group will be in only this week. The next the week on, it will be in the sign-up center. Okay, I'll interpret that just in case you couldn't hear. What Kurt said was uh, the bulleted insert will be in here one more week, and then after that you can find that insert where all the small groups are listed uh, in the office or on the, uh, yeah. the welcome center. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, is that all the announcements, Steve? Uh, two more that I have that are real quick. Uh, some of you have pointed out our uh, be our guest cards that we have at the uh, exits there, and you're picking those up, and you're going, wait a minute, we've got the wrong times on there. Uh, if you actually take the time to read the card, you'll see that we're advertising the services that meet nine months out of the year at that time. And then right below the times, it says we also have season times for Easter that you can find. Okay, So just make note of that when you're giving a card to someone. Uh, point out to them, uh, you know, nine months of the year, these are the times we meet, and then when we're in season, these are the times we meet, okay? So we decided to do it that way. That way we didn't have two sets of cards that were given to people. So, for example, if we have a seasonal card, you give it to someone, well, they attend outside of season, they're going to have the wrong time. So we made it easy, uh, but we just got to read on that, okay? And then secondly, uh, some of you have asked about the phone app. A lot of you have been putting the phone app on your phone. You're discovering that you have access to the bulletin on your phone. We're even putting the sermon notes uh, for you to take notes and uh, the scriptures. Uh, so if you haven't done that yet, some of you are kind of intimidated by that. See Kurt afterwards, and he'll help you get that on your See me afterwards, and I'll help you get that on your phone, okay? <laughs> that would not be good. But that, that is a tremendous tool that we have. The small group lessons are on there as well, and you can answer all those questions on your phone, your iPad. A lot of people are doing that. So if that's something you're interested in, all the calendar events are on there. Um, and so I would tell you this. We're finding out that uh, people think, well, I downloaded that app last year. If you downloaded it last year, you haven't downloaded the new one. We didn't have the new one until December of this last year. So if you haven't downloaded it since December, you've got the old one that no longer works. Okay? Clear as mud? Good. Oh, that, uh, that, uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, first time guest. Your first time guest over here. We'd like to know who you are. First time guest. Anybody? Okay, on this side. Okay. Okay, there's one right there. Okay. I'm Rick Stove and my wife Renee. Okay. Uh, where are you guys from? Where are you from? Originally Chicago, but I was born in Georgia and retired six years ago. Okay, glad to have you here. Glad to have you here. Thanks for being here today. All right, terrific, terrific. Uh, want you, if you're if you're uh, one of our guests, we want you to go back to the welcome area, and they'd like to give you a gift. Uh, what's the gift today, Steve? Uh, we need your keys for that car we're giving okay, away. Okay, yeah. It doesn't <laughs> mind. Don't give him the car. No, we're giving away those Turvises, a, a drinking cup that has yeah. the logo on it. It's got some information, some candy in it as well, uh, just to kind of sweeten your visit with us tonight. So. All right. We're glad to have you with us. Thanks for being here tonight. Let's stand together and ask God to bless us. And he has blessed us. Lord, thank you for being with us. Thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for sharing with us uh, around this table. Thank you for letting us uh, give gifts, but also, Lord, sing to you. Uh, it is always great to be with God's people. It is so good to sing wor and worship with them. Lord, uh, we've been together with people, and there are thousands of people singing, and when there were ten, Lord, and we're just grateful for those opportunities to worship you. Thank you for being here with us. And go with us as we go out into the world, Lord. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a nice day, Jesus. Have a nice day.